Good morning, Vinyl Community. Bradley here. Just got a couple albums I'd like to show today. Uh, <clears throat> this one I picked up, it was around Christmas time. Uh, Blue Note, they've got their 80th anniversary series going on, as well as the Tone Poets. So, and they have a uh, kind of like a subdivision of that series called Live Records. So this is one of the uh, live releases. It's Jimmy Smith, Groovin' as Small's Paradise, Volume One. Now there was a Volume Two also released. Uh, this was recorded in November of 1957. I think it was released the next month. So uh, they released two volumes, uh, which back in the day, I don't think people really released double albums, did they? I can't really think of too many. So they just released two single albums. <coughs> and what's a little unusual about this, uh, <clears throat> the front and back of this Volume 1 is exactly the same as Volume 2, except for the uh, the catalog number, Blue Note, 1585, Volume 1, and on the rear also. The liner notes are exactly the same. They've got track listings for both volumes on here. This is Volume 1 and Volume 2. Now the front of it is exactly the same, except for the uh, the red lettering on volume one is in green on volume two. So, like I said, this is a three-piece uh, organ trio. You've got uh, Jimmy Smith, of course, on organ, uh, Jimmy McFadden on guitar, and Donald Bailey on drums. which Donald Bailey played with Jimmy quite a bit on his recordings, I know. Uh, like I said, this was released in 1957. Um, and I think Jimmy's first recordings on Blue Note were in 55. Probably, I don't know, had four of them maybe, 56. Probably had four or five of them. In 57, he had like seven or eight releases on Blue Note. So he was making Blue, Mo Blue Note uh, pretty good money. His records sold really good. So they kept churning out the albums by Jimmy Smith. And I know I've mentioned it before, as far as record labels, uh, Impulse record label is known as the house that Train built, John Coltrane, because he sold so many records for Impulse. Uh, Verve, Ella Fitzgerald was the first signing and her manager was the founder of Verve Records. So she put out a ton of stuff on Verve. So at least she laid the foundation for Verve. And as far as Blue Note, I wouldn't say Jimmy Smith built Blue Note, but he kept the lights on. Uh, there was a lot of money coming in from the sale of his records, which allowed them to record other artists. You know, all those classic Blue Note artists. So this this album has just four songs, three year standards. Uh, After Hours is the first one, kind of a blues. My Funny Valentine, uh, this particular song, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, it's called Slightly Monkish, which was written by Jimmy Smith. And if you know anything about Monk, you know, piano player, odd way of playing. So that's really hard to translate to, you know, how do you translate it? Late that to organ or guitar or any other instrument. Uh, it's really hard to do, but Jimmy attempts it on this song. And the last song is a ballad called Laura. 
And when I first listened to this album, I did hear something that was just a little unusual, I thought, but I didn't think too much about it. But I was reading uh, Wikipedia about this album, which it only had a paragraph. But it did say that the organ that Jimmy was using that night, uh, the Hammond B3 has a little couple switches. They call, <clears throat> call it the percussion switches which does not mean drums or anything. It just adds a percussive attack to the, if you strike the keys hard. And they said it was not working when they recorded this. So that's why he plays in maybe a slightly different style as far as the, the sound of the, the voicings. I don't know. I'm listening to it now and I don't know. I thought I had it figured out, but <laughs> at least that's what they said. So it's a good live album, uh, unless you're into organ trios or Jimmy Smith. Yeah, I don't know. You might not think too much of it, but uh, I, I always like Jimmy Smith and I like to hear uh, his live stuff. So. That was good. The second and last album. <laughs> uh, this album came out, I think this particular album came out Black Friday, Record Store Day. It is by a current jazz musician, John Batiste. It's called Chronology of a Dream. And it was recorded live at the Village Vanguard. John Batiste, he's the uh, musical director on the Late Night with Stephen Colbert, Late Night Show. Uh, super, super talented. He not only plays jazz, he's played with all kinds of genres of musicians. He's just a world-class musician, basically. So I always like his, his stuff. Uh, like I said, I, I was at Wooden Nickel Records in Fort Wayne the other day, and I did not make it to Black Friday Record Store Day. So I was looking through the bin, the leftover bin, and this record was in there, which I wanted to pick this up, but I did not make Black Friday. But I was a little confused because I looked at the name of this, Chronology of a Dream, and I was thinking, well, I thought it was called Anatomy of Angels, recorded live at the Village Vanguard. So I was a little confused. Well, I went up to pay for it, and uh, Tim, the manager, I think he knew the story behind it. Uh, just a couple months before this was released, he released another uh, album that was recorded at Village Vanguard like three months before this one and that was called Anatomy of Angels So they were either recorded at the same time or within a couple weeks which was in early November of 2018 and uh, Actually the the I think the day before this recording um, Roy Hargrove, the jazz trumpet player, died. I think he had kidney failure. He was only like 50 years old or something. He was fairly young. And uh, so anyhow, John Batiste, his first appearance at the Village Vanguard was 10 years earlier with as a member of uh, Roy Hargrove's band. So this whole album is, is more or less dedicated to uh, Roy Hargrove. And actually the last song, it's probably not actually even a song, but uh, it has spoken word by Roy Hargrove. I think it's Batiste and him talking. And uh, so it's uh, very cool. There's the, uh, and like I said, this, I don't know if I said it. This is on Verve Records, which I love the little uh, 
box down here it says Verb Records, a panoramic, true, high fidelity record. You can read that, which is cool. I like uh, John Batiste, uh, his stuff. It's pretty mainstream jazz. Um, little, just mainstream, a little modern maybe in bits and pieces. Uh, now he's, he's from New Orleans, from a musical family. So you've got some New Orleans uh, influences in here. A uh, couple songs, the piano, it might sound a little uh, Dr. John-ish. Uh, he has one song on here, I'm not sure if it's Kenner or not, A Boogie Woogie, I think it's just him on piano, solo piano, but that reminds me so much of uh, Earl Hines, and uh, so there's a lot of uh, New Orleans influence, which there's a lot of really good musical families, uh, the Marsalises, they're from New Orleans, uh, Trombone Shorty. What's his name? Troy Andrews or something like that. Uh, his family, they're all musical from New Orleans. Dr. John. So, this is a, this is a good album. And it was recorded, like I said, live. And more or less kind of a party uh, vibe going to it. If you've ever heard... Uh, Cannonball Adderley, Live at the Club, back in the 60s. Uh, it had Mercy, Mercy, Mercy on there. Uh, and the crowd was kind of up front in the mix. Uh, at times, this is similar. They're just having a really, really good time. So you catch a little bit of that vibe, and it makes it just even more enjoyable. So... I think that's it for the records today. So just hope everybody has a nice week. So I will catch you later. See ya.